Got a north wind. It's also a little bit of easterly as well. It's kind of weird. Um, man, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, we're gonna hurry up here, get in the tree, and see if we can't kill a deer tonight. Slipping in here, I can already start seeing there's a pile of acorns in here. It's been pretty much like that everywhere I've gone. They've actually hunted back here, been hunting this ridge for a really long time. Back in high school, long time. And I actually. I actually missed my first buck with a bow here. My senior year of high school. I came in here and it was funny, I came in here at lunchtime and I put up my tree stand and at the time you could bait, I put out a little bit of corn. While there's acorns out there, don't ask. And uh, I got in the tree, it was about six o'clock just starting to get to be that really nice time and a uh, nice eight point walks out and I'm shaking you know really really bad and all of a sudden I phew, sailed it right over his back it's crazy and then my brother my brother it was the year before we started filming. So 2012. Oh no, maybe in 2012. 2012 or 2013. I actually think it was 2012. Anyways. He came in here. October 24th. And shot his biggest buck with a bow. Nice 10 point. October 24th. It was a complete blizzard. And... He arrows this buck. I was at work. I was working in, uh, working at the jail and I had to work the afternoon shift so we didn't get off till 10 o'clock at night. Me and Joe ran out here and tracked it, tracked it. Nothing couldn't find it so we let it lay. The next morning I came in and I found it down by the river. Right on the river bank. It was awesome. It's one of the coolest moments. Anywho, I'm just slip it along. Kind of Doing a little bit of scouting while I'm also making sure I'm not setting up near any other tree stands. See if I can find any scrapes. We got a weird north, northeast wind. So it's, uh, I usually always set up for like a, like a west wind or northwest wind, even a southwest, but we'll have to make it do, make it work. Yeah, now we're getting to it. Let's bring back, brings back a lot of memories. Now I want to pick a tree. It's kind of got some back cover behind it. Oh, there's so many acorns. Oh, I think I just jumped a deer. Maybe it's a squirrel. I don't know. Oh, I just spotted a scrape. Fresh scrape. Look at this. Just 
favorite things about one of the oaks like this is I'm not I'm not expecting to see a you know 115 120 inch 8 point or 10 point tonight I'm not but the chances of seeing deer in general are just really high this has always been a pretty good spot for me for my brother uh, for friends and we've always kind of it's pretty it only takes me like eight minutes to drive here from my house so out pretty nice but the nice thing is is you can hop in here with a climber you can come in here like I got the beast stand set up you can come in here with a saddle I mean there's there's a bunch of di you know diversity in trees you know you want a little bit of cover you can hop into a pine tree or next to a pine tree you know you want to hop into a bigger oak tree you can do that that's the nice thing about it it's kind of stress-free it's not hard to find a tree it is kind of weird hunting this with an east or northeast wind. So the wind's coming out of the northeast. Because I'm so used to hunting it with a west wind, but I figured what the hell, why not? It's pretty, like I said, pretty close to the house, so I figured no brainer. Hop in here, there's plenty of acorns. It's clearly deer sign, so I'm pumped. some of those like wide cut noodles yeah boil that lather that all over them noodles it's good stuff I'm gonna eat that tonight that's gonna be good that's, that's what I got planned
I think there was a fourth deer up there, but that doe came walking right back in. So, I'll get down, look at there. I'll make a decision. All right. So I went down and looked at the arrow, and I, I don't know if it happened during the flight or after it went through the deer, but I'm missing a fletching. So I don't know. The shot did look like it was of hair back. But even then, I mean, I, I mean, it was 10 yard chip shot. So I don't, I don't know. And then I, I followed the blood trail for about 15 yards. It didn't, it really didn't look bad. The only thing the blood was a little bit watery, but it did have bubbles in it. So I know I got into some of the lungs, but I'm not gonna risk bumping that deer. I, I, I anytime I have any sort of question about the hit, I let him go till the morning. So it's, 48 degrees out right now that deer is going to be fine in the morning uh, I just hope the coyotes don't get into it but we'll get in there tomorrow morning take a look and check it out but yeah it sucks but uh, I'm not going to risk it I'm not going to risk not recovering that deer because I want to start chasing it and get a recovery tonight when I could let it lay you know if it is a marginal hit you know she'll die in you know whatever time she needs so alright see you guys in the morning alright headed out right now to go look for that deer I shot last night I um, I kind of played it back in my head and I, this should, the doe was just out of frame so I I can't see exactly where it hit um, it was also you know pretty low light on the camera anyways but she came back in and I don't know I had a doe tag in my pocket so I was like well if I'm gonna do it I could do it now you know but when I got down, like I said last night, I had a fletching missing from the arrow. And what I kept trying to replay in my head was maybe the arrow flight path, if there was anything weird about it. And I couldn't think of anything weird, so it kind of leads me to believe that it came off going through the deer, which, I mean, I understand happens, but still it's, uh, there is that slight chance that it came off during flight because I mean the shot and everything felt great it wasn't you know 10 12 yards from the base of my tree a chip shot so I don't I don't really know what to make of it perhaps it did I'd be interested to see if there's the fletching you know on the ground between where the deer was standing and you know the tree that I shot it from that'd be interesting to see who knows but anyways, we're gonna go back in. There was blood last night, but the blood was just 
very watery. There was bubbles in it, so I know I got into the lungs, but it was bubbly. And that just kind of didn't sit well with me. So as much as it sucks, I anytime there's a marginal hit or something, I have absolutely no issue letting them lay overnight, especially if it's cold as it is. I mean, it's 45 degrees out right now. There ain't nothing wrong with that deer. Even if I did get into the guts, you know, that deer's still gonna be just fine. So I didn't push it, didn't get its adrenaline up or anything like that. So it's, you know, typically you get a shot like that, they go maybe 100, 200 yards, they bed down. And if you let them lay, they will die in that bed. So if you ever think that you have a gut shot on a deer, and you look at the arrow, I've seen hundreds of arrows, seen hundreds of gut shots, and the most typical thing people do is they walk in on them, they push them out of their first bed, which is usually within 100 to 200 yards of where they shot it, and that deer can run for however long it needs to. It's not dying from losing blood, it's dying, you know, losing it's dying from septic shock is what it is to it. It's poisoning the blood system. We'll lose blood, yes, but that's going to take a lot longer. But I do think we did get into the uh, heart, or uh, not, excuse me, not heart, the lungs. <clears throat> so I do have that going in my favor. But if you ever hit only one lung, there's always the possibility that this deer could, you know, that that deer could uh, make it a long time on just one lung. But that's why I always play it safe back out it's not even a question first 15 yards it, the blood looked good but it just looked watery it looked like you know and guts and well, I didn't see any stomach matter or anything like that there was none on the arrow uh, that doesn't always indicate that um, you know that it stayed out of the guts you know that deer's running on an empty stomach there's not much in there it's not always going to have stomach matter on it. So hope this kind of helps you guys. I'm trying to document this mu as much as possible because I know I get so many messages throughout the bow season. People that I know, people that want, you know, that follow us and, you know, they, they get a marginal hit on a deer and, you know, they tell me, oh, I walked in and, you know, I started tracking and we, we jumped it 100 yards from where I shot it. And I'm like, you hit it in the stomach. I said, back out, give it eight hours at least. And you know then go back in after it but on the unfortunate thing is once you bump them out of that first bed on a gut shot they can go a long ways sometimes a mile if not more it's uh it's actually pretty incredible what they can do so yeah good cloudy overcast morning um would have hunted this morning if i wouldn't have uh, shot a deer last night but uh, i gotta get this one taken care of first so we're almost there. We're going to go get into the woods and see if we can find this deer. So there's that scrape. I told you I'm not bad ones. I didn't have scrape, but I was in that tree right there. This one. Like I said, I was in this tree and I shot her. She was right behind this, just to the left of this pine tree. See that my uh, fletching is missing. There was plenty of blood all over the arrow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry this arrow with me. I'm going to carry this arrow with me, and every time I get the last blood, I'm going to mark it so I can kind of keep an eye on it. But okay, so here this answers a big question because here's my fletching, and you can see. That's all good red blood. There's no guts on that. And that's important. That doesn't mean I didn't get into the stomach, but you can see here. This was the blood that I found last night. Ran right through here. Well, just as I thought. I thought I heard her crash last night and within a hundred yards of the tree. She's right there. I think it is the uh, smaller of the does that came in last night. I think I made the right decision backing out. So yeah, that was the uh, that was the entrance right there. 
So, yeah, not a big doe at all, but uh, a doe nonetheless. So, gonna hurry up and get her out of the woods and um, get back to the house, get her hung up, something. So, some good fresh meat in the freezer. I'm excited. I probably want to get, I think, one more doe um, during bow season here out the freezer I might take one I kind of want to get it all done before rifle season I'm not really not a huge fan of shooting does during rifle season but if I have to I will um, yeah good deal all right let me get her out of the woods girl got it up tag and get her out of the woods so